Hey everybody, this is Kate. And Devin. Welcome to Med Crimes. Boop, 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 boop. She did that. you guys oh here we are again we're doing with our bi-weekly schedule yes yeah so yes. if you guys didn't know like that's our thing now like yeah. it's in writing we're gonna be in every other tuesday <laughs> every other Cooper tuesday Girls. every other tuesday you get a dose of med crimes and it's gonna be amazing i hope you i hope you love us because we I love you i hope you'll miss us on the th- other 13 days that we're not released because i miss us on those 13 days that we're not going to be releasing i wish we could release stuff multiple times a day every day oh maybe one day maybe one day maybe one day maybe one day wouldn't that be nice you might get sick of us Devin and i went camping together this weekend so if you missed our instagram live so did i because somehow i was not able to retrieve that on instagram Is that a thing with Instagram? I think when you're live and maybe. it stops, it goes away. Yeah, like your something live like is that. legit live and then it's gone. I think you're probably right. As you can tell, we're not social media gurus. But we'll get there with your yeah. help. And like a the lot Facebook more Lives stay. Yeah. Facebook Lives do stay. Yeah, Instagram is a whole nother animal though. But hey, it's nice and cool down in the basement. It's hot in my house. So I love camping. Can we go back to that tangent? I know. And that hey, was my family's first camping trip. Congratulations. I got to write that down in a journal somewhere, but yeah, there's somewhere. a lot of things I have to write down in a journal. Like, I'm pretty sure my journal doesn't even know that Andrew's born. Oh, God. <laughs> it's been busy the last 20 something months. I mean, that does happen. <laughs> yep. Now, well. if I do sound just a little bit extra sexy this time around, it's because I am still recovering from having the flu. Which is really gross and terrible. She did have the flu. I did. Ew. Ew. Gross. So we're on the up and up. It's getting out of my house. I we just have, sound we, gross. We you we we've been like all sorts of bugs. The kids. They're petri dishes. Ugh. It's awful. Gross. Yeah. Kate told me that this story is awesome, creepy. And gross. Yeah. And I also said, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you his name. So you cannot Google him because he's, I, it was actually, this was actually a Patreon request. So thank you to the person that requested it. Um, And I Googled it and immediately was like, this happened and we have to talk about this. I'm intrigued. I know. I'm, I'm so, sorry, intrigued. so intrigued. <laughs> and I let, I have no idea who the person is. Yeah. And I, oh, I, I at least before usually get a name and like. Nothing. A tagline. So I will tell you his name is Carl Tansler. 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 And I typically do like a little blurb, like when I start these things with like, so-and-so was a, you know, American blah, 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 who did this, 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 and this. And then I tell the story. I'm not going to do that this time. Oh. Like, yeah. Because I'm just going to let it all unfold. I don't want to spoil su- the surprise for Devin. Her eyes are a whole situation. I want to talk about our Patreons. Me too. That's what I want to do. We have a lot of you them. guys. We have six new Patreons. Six new Patreons. We six are new Patreons. So but honored and humbled, and thank you so 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 much, all dude. To you. The support has been like it's been incredible, amazing. We are before we announce our six new ones. Somebody's gonna get a second shout out. Okay, so, so go ahead. I had sent out stickers recently to our. Patreons, and there was one Patreon who, when I was writing out her name on the envelope, like her address, I noticed that her name was spelled a lot differently than I had initially (laughs) read it. And I went back and I listened to that episode that I announced her name on and was like horrified to realize that I announced her name wrong. So, and I'm really glad that she's still a Patreon and <laughs> didn't too. just say, "Wow, you just, I know. 
Like, screw you guys. And it's not like it's a hard last name to say. It's that no. I glanced at it and clearly just read it wrong. And I am so, so sorry that happened. She's but getting a redo. I am. So Kayla Cropper, not Cooper, Cropper. I am so sorry that I did that to you. And thank you so much for continuing to be a Patreon after I butchered your rather simple last name. You're adorable. I am. To our new Patreons, Stephanie Foster. Stephanie Foster. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. Jennifer Turner. Jennifer Turner. We also love you, Jennifer Turner. Jessica Escalera. Whoa. I know. Wow. That That doesn't happen often. (laughs) I love your name, Jessica Escalera. Alicia Rochelle. Alicia Rochelle. Thank you. And we have Beth Walsh. Thank you, Beth. No purr after that name. Yeah, oh. also for all of you. <laughs> and Ashley Worm. Ashley Worm, thank you. Welcome to... all of you to the family. Hashtag Patreon fam. We love you guys. Thank you so, so, so much. Welcome. We hope you enjoy. We're loving the fam. We hope are. you guys are enjoying some of the little exclusivity that you get. You got Dr. Klein's episode early. You got stickers. There's Patreon giveaways. Yes. Mm-hmm. We love it. There'll be more coming. So, without so, further ado. Carl. Which I find that I say every time. I think that's my new friend, my, my new phrase. Without further ado. I feel like it was somebody's phrase before yours. Oh, oh it definitely was. <laughs> I'm just making it mine now. With, okay. Got you know, it plagiarism and stuff so without further ado (laughs) so carl carl tanzler now he is a german-born radiology technologist just so you know he was born in germany yep he was born in germany so he actually went by a few different names so there were names that I found. Um, he went by George Carl Tanzler. He also went by Carl Tanzler von Kossel at one point. Von Kossel. But on his death certificate, this is listed, he is listed as Carl Tanzler. Um, so from what we can tell of his early life, he was born Carl Tanzler on February 8th, 1877. In Dresden, Germany. 1877. Yeah, I told you. So I do a lot of like modern cases, like within the last 40-ish years or so. And I really wanted to do something old I think this would be our oldest case. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. For sure. Good job. Thank you. This is like, this guy was born eight years after my house was built. Yeah. Yep. That's my odd fact for the day. Okay. Thank you, Devin. Welcome. So he was born Carl Tanzler. In February, February 8th, 1877, in Dresden, Germany. He grew up in Imperial Germany, but really spent his formative years and a lot of his childhood traveling and living, like, in many different parts of the world. So I don't actually have a shitload of information on his childhood and, like, his parents or his siblings Well, and what records are there from 1877? I, very little. So... I apologize for not having more information, but also he traveled, you know, the world. So it was hard to say exactly what he was well traveled. So Tanzler did spend, I think, his first few years anywhere anyway in Germany. And he um, apparently spent time in Australia around the time of World War One, where he might have even been held in detention for a period of time. There's some records that reflect that, apparently. Hmm. So um, he did some journaling during his childhood. And so we got some accounts of like where he ended up. We know that he was in Italy for a time. We know that he was in Australia for a time. Really all just by his accounts of the past. Thanks for keeping those, dude. Yeah, thanks, bro. So um, he did this journaling. What else did he keep in his journals? Um, he didn't do, he didn't pull the, uh, Swango weirdness All right, and he did not you, So you saw where I was going I with knew that exactly one. where you were going right. with that. Yep. yep. <laughs> Does he so, have a death book? <laughs> no, this is not a death book. Um, it is weird for another reason though, because he did, um, describe in his journals that he was plagued by many visions and he had dreams as a child that he took very seriously. And he 
claimed that he met many of his ancestors in his visions and dreams and his ancestors would like talk to him and tell him what to do and what not to do and he was just very like consumed by this which is kind of we- kind of weird i mean initially it sounds kind of cool So that's, that's basically where he took it. He was like, yeah, I mean, they're my ancestors. So So he took something ideal. That's kind of cool to psycho. Yeah. I mean, kind of, he definitely, that's a running theme here. Right. (laughs) So now there was one vision in particular that had a huge impact on him. This was like probably around his teen years or preteen years. So an ancestor of his apparently came to him in this vision and showed him this woman. He they showed him an image of this woman who had dark, dark, like black hair and beautiful, smooth skin and just had the most beautiful face and was like this angel. Like she was an angelic beauty. And his ancestor. I'm not seeing the problem here. So his ancestor said, this is the woman you were going to marry. And that just, I mean, was it imprinted on his soul from so this like day 12, forward. 13. Yeah. And he had seen the woman that he quote unquote was going to marry and was the love of his life and was going to be with him forever. And his ancestor had told him this. So he took it seriously and was like, this is the person that I'm going to marry and going to be in her? love with. So records do reflect that he actually married someone around year 1921 named Doris Schaefer. And, um, so he's like mid forties. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Cause didn't they get married young, young back then? Time. He was born in 1877. Right. But yep. didn't they back in that age get married young? Yeah. Not him. Yeah. He also traveled like the world That's right. a lot. That's right. So That's it may have busy. just been that he didn't settle down enough to like find that person. But he did marry Doris Schaefer um, in 1921. And records also reflect that Tanzler emigrated to the United States following that marriage. So in 1926 is when he first came to the United States. Where he ended up settling was in Zephyrillus, Florida. And so he and his wife actually stayed there for a period of time. They had two children, um, Aisha and Clarista. And both of them unfortunately died of diphtheria. Oh, gosh. Isn't that awful? That's so sad. Ugh. Yeah. So, Get your tea dap. I know. Honestly. Get your tea they dap. didn't have that. They didn't have a lot of things back then. Um, and. Uh, we think about, you know, the pandemic now and how we feel so helpless. But, I mean, can you imagine living in this time mm-hmm. where, like, diphtheria, and we're going to be talking about tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you get it, and pretty much you die. Like, yeah. You don't survive that. Well, it's kind of like polio. Back yeah, when well, they exactly. Had, you know? It's crazy. Mm-hmm. We, it's crazy. So, um, now, very unfortunately, he did lose his two daughters to That's diphtheria. Very sad. Yeah. So I did find conflicting information as many sources actually referred to him as a doctor or a radiologist, but I was not able to find any record that he attended any sort of formal schooling or education. And um, I found other sources referring to him as a radio radiologic technologist or an x-ray technician. One okay. of the two, I know they have different roles now for that, right. but I think But back then, they might have been the same role. Exactly. Back then, you know, the imaging that they had was basically x-rays. Right. So um, that's a large part of what he did. In 1930, he left his wife. Um, oh. and, and his kids actually, because his kids were still alive at this point, his kids died oh. like two years later. Oh. So he left his wife and he took a job as a, I think a radiology technician or an x-ray technician at U.S. Marine Hospital in Key West, Florida under the name Carl Tanzler. So this was his name, at least at that point. Mm-hmm. So it was in the 1930s. So TB or tuberculosis was rampant in this part of the country at the time. And we didn't really have access, obviously, to any of the drugs that we have now to treat this. So being diagnosed with TB was often a very poor prognosis or, you know, you're going to die, unfortunately. So 
for those of you who are not really familiar with tuberculosis and, you know, the whole vibe back then. The so, vibe. The vibe of tuberculosis. So it's also referred to as TB. Often in these days, it was referred to as consumption, and you'll see why. Um, it's a mycobacterial infection, which is most commonly found attacking the lungs, but it can actually also attack many different organ systems. It can attack the kidneys, liver, spine, joints. Not everyone who was exposed becomes actively sick, but the infection can remain latent for years and never cause an issue until all of a sudden it does. It's opportunistic in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but when someone does have an active tuberculosis infection, it is quite contagious via air droplets. And when the infected person coughs or sneezes, they're just disseminating it throughout the room. Mm -hmm. And people who cohabitated, lived together, would, it would often just go through families and kill entire families. Now, the symptoms, aside from the coughing and sneezing, include night sweats, high fevers, unintentional weight loss, and hemoptysis, or coughing up blood. So, I mean, these people, if they didn't die from the respiratory complications, they would literally waste away. Right. They would lose weight and, you know, become mm -hmm. so malnourished Mal and cachectic yeah. that they, their organs would fail. So even today, it's pretty rare in the United States. It is tough to treat, even today. I mean, if you get diagnosed with active TB, you're committed to long courses of multiple different antibiotics. Mm. It's pretty complicated. Right. So that's what they were dealing with back then. Now, Carl met and helped treat many of these patients because a chest X-ray is a big part of the diagnosis of TB. Even today, yes, we would yes, see it, it the is. infiltrate yep. on, on an x-ray. So that's what they used back then. Now, as a radiology tech, which I think is the term that I'm going to use to you know refer to him back then, I'm not exactly sure what the title of his role was. Um, in 1930, x-ray, like I said, was a popular tool to use. And in fact, in terms of imaging, that was just about our only option. Now, CAT scan and CT imaging did not come about until about the mid-1960s. But the x-rays had started get, getting a little bit more sophisticated. Um, they were actually starting to utilize like oral contrast mm -hmm. on, for x-rays, like for gut x-rays. They could, they Don't could do that. Don't we love the flavor of that stuff? I've mm. never actually had contrast. Stop. No, You've never had to drink the goop? No, I have to order it for a lot of people, though. Oh. I, I deal it out. I don't I take my own medicine. I can't believe you never had it. No? Wow. What does it taste like? Goop. Ew, really? <laughs> Grape flavored goop. That's disgusting. Okay. So on April 22nd, 1930, a woman walked into U.S. Marine Hospital in Key West. She had brown eyes, jet black hair, and a beautiful face. Her name was Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyos. Mm -hmm. And she was a young Cuban American woman. And by all accounts, she was like the local babe. I mean, she was. So this is that girl. This is that girl. This is the girl. He took one look at her and was like. That's it. That's her. This is her. This is the lady that came to mm -hmm. me in my dream all those years ago. Now, Elena, she goes by Elena. I know her first name's Maria, but she goes by Elena. She was the daughter of a local cigar maker named Francisco Hoyos, and her mother's name was Aurora Milagro. Now, she had two sisters, Florinda and Celia, and... These names are beautiful. I know. I'm I'm, I, they're amazing. <laughs> so, on February 18th, 1926, Elena actually got married to somebody else named Luis Mesa, but Mesa actually left Elena shortly after they got married because she suffered a miscarriage. Oh, no. How awful is that? Oh, prick. I know. Prick is right. Jesus. Ugh. So, actually, at the time of her death, Elena was still legally married to this guy. Oh. Yeah. So, she was being brought in at the time by her mother because she had developed a cough with bloody sputum, weight loss, and fevers. And she obviously feared that her daughter had consumption, or TB. Mm -hmm. Now, Carl encounters her and is immediately struck, like I said, not only by her beauty, but he, because he recognized her immediately as the woman, the woman that he was plagued with visions of in his early years. And he immediately fixated on her and was convinced 
that she was the love of his life and that he was going to marry her and they were going to just be together forever and everything was going to be great. She was 22 years old, by the way. That's a lot of pressure for her. I mean, yeah. I mean, and she comes in like on her deathbed, it sounds like. I mean, like. she is not a well woman right now. Right. This is not going well. So the two begin talking and very quickly, Carl like professed his love for her. And again, now she was pretty sick at the time and appreciated his offers and his affections. But I found no accounts that she like was into him really or reciprocated any Slow anything. Slow it down, Carl. She was, I think, very Take polite. Take a step back. Yeah, I think she was like very polite, and she, you know, didn't turn down like his gifts and his affection. And obviously, <laughs> she was literally dying, so she didn't feel well enough to, you know, really fight him off. You know. <laughs> Right? I'm just not feeling well today. Can you flirt tomorrow? Yeah, can we put this off? I mean, literally. <laughs> so, again, she was quite literally on her deathbed for much of their relationship. So, very quickly, once she was encountered, she was diagnosed with tuberculosis. And Carl was devastated. He was devastated. So... Despite Carl having very little actual medical training and virtually no medical knowledge except for how to take an x-ray, um, he would not accept that his love was dying. And he had just met her, but he knew that the two were meant to be together forever and could not fathom that his love might actually be taken away from him so soon. But I just met you. I know. Well, this is not cool. Don't go. Not okay. So, he, I mean, that makes me feel sad for him. Oh yeah. I mean, but, I feel I mean, for the guy like, so far. Dude. I really do. Um. So he showers her and her mother and father and her sisters with like gifts and affection, and he became determined to single handedly like save her from tuberculosis. So he started like mixing shit up. Like mixing up tonics and what? like order, like buying all these like snake oil, like fake, Ew. you know, tinctures and making these like elixirs. And he like fed her all of these different concoctions every day to like try to turn things around. He How out of desperation. He, so I know he was like in radiology, but that gave him access to her every day while she's in the hospital. Oh, he was like visiting her. Like she was, she actually like died at home. She spent okay. a lot of her time at home. Yeah, and so, so she like just didn't have the energy to be like, please don't come to my house. Well, I I don't. <laughs> there was nothing that said that they were really together, and she okay. was very ill at the time. But I think her and her family were both very appreciative of the financial gestures and the okay. gifts. And okay. I mean, her whole family was being showered in gifts by this okay. guy. Okay. Um. So I think. I'm just like trying she, to understand. They the were grasp. kind of complacent to the whole thing, okay, and didn't you know really bat an eye at it because they appreciated what he was doing for her and like how devoted he was, especially when she's in such a state. Exactly. Okay. So I, at least I think that's sort of the impression that I got. Now, um, he's showering everybody in gifts, right? And he's trying all these elixirs and all these mixing up all this crazy shit and feeding it to her, trying to get her to get better, and. Out of desperation, um, he was, like, you know, just trying to find that, like, winning combination that no other doctor or scientist had yet identified as millions of people died of TB around the world. That's, I'm sure they're probably doing right now trying yeah. for COVID. Well, that's the thing. And he even brought, like, x-ray equipment to her home to, like, keep taking x-rays and, like, <laughs> you know, that radiographic surveillance. Mm, I'm sure that's doing really well for her, too. Yeah. That's yeah. helping. So... Um, he was giving her jewelry, books, clothing. Again, no real evidence that this was reciprocated, but I think that maybe she was a little desperate too. You know, I mean, she was sad and her family she's, was upset. That, and, and she's scared. I'm and sure. she's scared. And her family is like, you know, maybe this guy will stumble upon something that's going to help her get better. You never know. You Could know, it hurt? he's willing to devote this much time and energy to try to get her better. Like, who am I to say? I mean, at no. this point, if she's quote unquote given a death sentence like what's it gonna hurt exactly it's not gonna hurt so he did this for over a year he barely left her side and did this every day day in day out for her for a year and unfortunately that's a really long time I know like to do that to spend all your time and energy on that that's a long time 
Mm. Now, unfortunately, the TB continued to progress and she was consumed by it. And she passed away on October 25th in 1931. So sad. Now, Bummer. Tansler, young. obviously, yes, very young. And Tansler was obviously, you know, beside himself with grief. Mm-hmm. He, he offered to pay for her funeral. And wow. he had grown very close with her family over this time. Mm-hmm. And he offered to commission the construction of this big, beautiful, like, above-ground marble mausoleum wow. for her to be in. And so... They, of course, obliged, you know, Um, and so this was in Key West Cemetery in Key West, Florida, and this was built, and she My cousin lives down there. I wonder if he can check it out for me. Oh, I know. Wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah. 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 Although she's not there anymore. We're going to talk about it. Oh. Oh. So, um, she was late. This just got weird. (laughs) You just wait, girl. You just wait. So, this is built. What spin is this going to take? Girl. Tanzler visited this mausoleum that his love was laid to rest in every single day. And by all accounts, you know, he was like a shell of a man. He was no longer himself. He was absolutely beside himself with grief. He would spend time like sitting by the, by, you know, the mausoleum and by her in her casket and like sing songs to her. He would talk to her like she's still alive. Like he, all those like really, I really can't move on type of things. Now, it's so sad. Yeah, it's very sad. Now, she he was still having these visions, okay? And he had would later recount that she would come to him in visions and talk to him Stop while it. he was at her graveside. And that's why he went so often, because she would always come to him and talk to him well, in I guess those moments. I can't blame him. Right? And so he would recount later that she said take me home and take me away from my, take me out of my grave. Take me home. Bring me home to you. I want to come home with you. What? Yeah. So after almost two years of him going there every day and mourning her death, he decided eventually that their time together was absolutely not over. And on a warm evening in April of 1933, a warm evening, (laughs) Carl it's Tanzler. Florida. Aren't they all warm? <laughs> Maybe I some mean, more than others. Still. It's a detail That's on a warm evening. I said evening. a warm evening because I didn't even write that down. I just assumed it was <laughs> warm because it's fucking Florida. It's always warm. So, so on the warm evening. Maybe warm evening. <laughs> in April of 1933, Tanzler went to the Key West Cemetery. He entered her mausoleum and opened her sarcophagus or what have you. And removed her body he had brought with him a toy wagon which he put radio her... flyer I, like, well that's that like... was my first thought was is this a radio flyer that like he's... the original radio flyer it model said, it might be he it said he he had just had a toy wagon it probably was something similar so it he put her on a toy wagon and he oh, man. rolled her this was at night. Again, this was not a broad daylight or anything. This was at night. And he removed her body from the cemetery. He put her in his vehicle and he drove her home. Now, again, th- it has been two years since she died. And, you know, embalming practices back then, I was then, just going to say, I think we're real sophisticated. Um, so, I mean, she had deteriorated uh-huh. pretty you know, considerably at this point. Uh, Now, as part of the um, preparation, I think what they did do is they removed the internal organs, like from the chest and the abdominal cavities. So they were like sunken and um, her skin had become definitely been decomposing and her body was essentially beginning to lose its shape altogether at this point. Now he filled her empty chest cavity and abdominal cavity with rags and plaster of Paris to help her maintain her natural shape. He dressed her in stockings, dresses, jewelry, and gloves. He would keep her body with him in his bed. She stayed in his bed all the time. That's now, disgusting. Yeah. 
I'm trying to like find the romantic part of it. It's, but oh, that's girl. disgusting. No, we're 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 far away. You know, it was romantic when he was at her graveside for you know yeah. a long time. Yeah. This like, is not like, romance. I'm this thinking is of like, psychosis. I'm thinking of like the notebook moment when they die know, in each other's see, bed that's holding their sweet. hands. But like But nobody let them go. Nobody disinterned any bodies in the notebook. No. <laughs> The Notebook was a very romantic movie. Thank you, Ryan Gosling, Thank for not you, doing Rachel that. Thank you, Rachel McAdams, for both of you for not being gross. To cope with the odor, he would use disinfectants and copious amounts of perfume. And, and he would candles. also, <laughs> Yep, and he would also <laughs> fill... Apple cider donut apple candles. cider donut. <laughs> and he would fill his home with fresh flowers all the time. The Oyo's family had remained close with Carl through all this, and when he, like, abruptly stopped going to her graves, grave site, they noticed, because they went all the time, too, and he was literally just always there, but then he just stopped. So they were like, I mean, okay, you know, maybe he's moved Did on a like little bit. Did they, like, notice anything different? Like, well, yes. Wagon we'll track it. marks? So there's that, but also he had stopped showing up to work around this time, and he just, like, lost his job. So... He started So he being, legit just stayed in his place with his dead friend. And I mean, he literally they were really became not more than like that. a recluse. Like he like he was a hermit. He never went out except to get supplies. To and, keep the smell down. Yeah. And um and like gifts what? for her and stuff and supplies for her to keep her dressed and fresh and we'll talk about it. Keep her dressed? Yeah, so, no. Okay. So, as time went on, of oh. course, she continues to decompose. And eventually, he made and inserted glass eyes for her. Okay. Can can you tell me, like, why? Is he, like, opening her eyes? I mean, who the hell knows what he actually Is he trying did. to make eye contact with her? So, what he's trying to do is restore her body to its original form, the which original is impossible because she's actively decomposing. So, this is more than rigor mortis. I know it. So her joints obviously begin to loosen as she, yeah. you know, decomposes. And he reinforced her loose joints using piano wire, um, essentially like holding her together. Oh. Yeah. And as her hair started to fall out uh, of her decomposing oh scalp, he fashioned a wig out of her hair. Um. And as her skin and soft tissues continued to deteriorate, he would apply mortician's wax to her face and How body. How long did this go on for? To, to essentially patch it back together. Now, he, Wait, he did patch this. Patch her skin back yeah, together? Yeah, with wax. Yeah. So, he was Oh, honey, your cheek's falling. Let me just let put me that just back. Let me just put here. that back together. What, what did I do with my yeah. wax? That's literally how that was going. What? So he, be, he be, again, was very reclusive, was a hermit and doing this, just going oh. out to buy like flowers and jewelry and women's clothes and more and wax things like that. More mortician's wax. Yes, exactly. And I mean, you don't he, suppose they sell it at Walmart, do you? <laughs> I have no idea. So he continued this meticulous reconstruction of her body and slept with her body in his bed every night for seven years. <sighs> What? Oh, I man. know, I know, I know. His did they cuddle? Was... Did he cuddle her? Oh, Devin, I think they oh, did more than cuddle. Oh, God, I might vomit. Oh. Devin's <laughs> face. This is the best. So this moment. is a nine-year-old dead body. Yeah, she's been dead for nine years. And so, oh. eventually, you know, the layers oh. of wax, you know, got real thick. Um... And she started looking, you know, like a, like a nah. doll. And he would paint her features on her face over the wax to make her look sort of like a mannequin or a life-size doll. Okay, and, I'm sorry. I have to say something. Yeah. That, there was a smell outside the home. <laughs> Probably. There had to have been. That no, Probably. that no spray or fresh <laughs> flowers is going to mask i know how wh c come on community like did he live in the woods so that no he did not live in the woods 
but he was very reclusive at the time. The town all thought he was very weird because this guy only ever goes out to buy, like, women's items and flowers. And the rumors started to, like, circulate. I mean, it was like a running joke in the town that he just, like, had a dead body in his house. I mean, yeah. oh, uh-huh. seven years? Now, his, her sister, Elena's sister, Florinda was never a huge fan of this guy. I mean, he knew that her sister was never really, like, into him, and as she did, like, appreciate his efforts and how much he seemed to care for her sister, she always felt that it was, like, a bit much, and, you know, he was kind of, like, just showering the family in gifts, and then, like, you know, she did, he just seemed weird to her. Now, she started hearing, like, these rumors around town about this quote-unquote hermit guy, and that he was always buying women's clothing and jewelry and tons of perfume and flowers. And Florinda was like, I wonder if he for real took my sister's body out of the mausoleum and brought her home and is wow. living okay. with my sister's body. So wait a minute. What made her come to that conclusion? Because she was hearing the rumors. There's like rumors around town that like this hermit guy... Yeah. And then there's there's an event that, that comes up. That... I know. But, like, there's rumors and whatever. But then, in all reality, like, is that... Are you really going to be like, did he actually... Is my sister actually in there? Like, well, why else would he because, just, like, be buy, like never uh, leave his home and buy all these know, women's items? A doll that he was trying to dress like her? Well, I mean, I'm just saying. Like... So, it all kind of culminated... <laughs> When a local boy was riding his bike in the area and he happened to glance in Carl's window and what he saw was Carl dancing with what appeared to be a life-sized doll or mannequin. Yeah, He picked her up (laughs) off the bed? I think that he picked her up and carried her around quite a bit, Devin. No! And lived and tried to like make it like they were living together. No, he did not. I think that's what happened. Did Uh, they eat dinner at the table together? I doubt that this was the first time that he danced with her corpse. I doubt it. Now, when Florinda (laughs) got wind that this little boy had seen this, she immediately started, like really started hard suspecting that she had that he had done something with her sister's corpse. Now, everything together was just, like, too much. So she actually picked up the phone and, like, called the authorities and said that, I really, th- can you guys check this out? I know it sounds crazy, but I think maybe he's my living with my sister's sister. disinterned corpse. So can you check that out? The authorities show up, and what they found was what looked like, uh, looked like a mannequin or a doll, but upon closer inspection, they realized that this was, in fact, a human body under all of those layers of wax of Elena Oyos. Now, in the house, um, they found that he had like a, this whole mini lab of all sort of like concoctions of like different disinfectants and like deodorants and like an alchemist yes, kind of thing. It's exactly, it's exactly what it was. And he was using all these chemicals and compounds to like preserve her and like keep her hidden away. Essentially his house was, was filled with fresh flowers also used <laughs> to cover the order. Um, now at this point it is 1940. Oh God. Isn't that insane? Oh God. Yeah. So of course, she her, the body was removed. Trigger warning here. Oh God. Um, because there's like themes of sexual assault, necrophilia. So you can skip ahead the next uh, twenty seconds if. Can the, I skip ahead? Yeah, go ahead, ahead, Devin. Go ahead. So, an autopsy was performed shortly after she was discovered, and identified the presence of a cardboard or paper tube that had been inserted between her legs into her pelvic cavity seemingly to mimic a vaginal opening now despite this finding he never actually admitted to have actually defiled her corpse in that way um but why was the tube there so to me it's like really you did did. you did you You did do that actually because that's why there's a tube that's why you put a tube in there oh so there's that now there are pictures which we're going to post when this episode's available um 
that were snapped of her body. Um, we're posting and, those? Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's like, I could try to describe it, but it looks like a mannequin head made out of wax that has painted eyes, eyebrows, and a wig of human hair. It's very upsetting to see. <sighs> now, this is more... Um, this it, it only gets more upsetting from here. So, shortly after the corpse's discovery by authorities... Elena's body was examined by physicians and pathologists and then, for reasons unknown, was put on public display what? at the Dean Lopez funeral home where it was viewed by as many as 7,000 people. Why? Which is a very, like, sick fact about this whole case. Like, why? What? You know, why, so they're why showing did this happen? off, like, his work. Like, look how this... Essentially, like, look what this man did to this woman and so it's sad for me because this woman you know who died tragically very young and just wanted to be probably like laid to rest in this nice like mausoleum and just like let Leave her rest her the in peace hell alone. she has not rested and you know what actually ended up happening is that people tried to keep like breaking into the funeral home and tampering with her body because it was starting to get some media attention. Like, what? Like, like, go look at this lady in the window. She's, like, got a wax face because this guy kept her in his house and, like, reconstructed her body. That's fucked up. And so what they ended up having to do was remove her and take her to an unmarked grave at an undisclosed location. What? Yeah. This poor woman Why? is now in an unmarked grave somewhere because people are awful. So she couldn't go back to her original mom. No, because they were afraid that they were going to break in there and tamper with her body. No. Oh, come on. Yeah. Isn't her that ridiculous? family knows where she is, right? They I knew. should really I hope sure so. Fuck hope I should so. hope so. Now, Tanzler. Come on. I know. Now, Tanzler was psychiatrically examined and found to so. be mentally competent to stand no. trial. And the charge was wantonly and maliciously destroying a grave and removing a body without authorization. No kidding. Yeah. So right now, I mean, at this time there really weren't any laws against like tampering with a body and like Mm -hmm. defiling a corpse. And like, that was not like technically against the law. So this was all (laughs) that they could charge this guy with. Right. You know, no matter how depraved and sick and psychotic this seems to us, they, they, Legally, there wasn't any law against so keeping a corpse in your home. So he's just charged with taking her out. With just stealing her from her grave. Exactly right. Grave robbing, essentially. Now, after a preliminary hearing on October 9th, 1940, at the Monroe County Courthouse in Key West, Tanzler was held to answer on this charge, but the case was eventually dropped. What? And he was released. No. Because at that time, the statute of limitations for the crime had expired. But this was in the same year that he got caught in 1940. Right. You're but telling me that he kept the, her there for seven years. That's Well, that's true. Yeah, you're right. It was seven years probably from when the com- crime was committed. And they couldn't actually charge him with that. Isn't that crazy? That's what is the statute of limitations for that? Just out of curiosity. I honestly don't know. I did not look it up. I don't know. It's oh. not seven years, clearly. So this case obviously started drawing nationwide media attention at the time, which is why her body got so much attention in the funeral home, which is really wrong. Um, and actually the public... Well, and shame on the funeral home. Oh, yeah. Like, there's no reason why for her to be that? on display. It just sickens me. It's very sad for her. Now, the case drew a lot of media attention, and people were the public was like really sympathetic with him. No, yeah, they no. they were very symptom. They viewed this as like a little weird, but romantic. No, like that his obsession with her like ran so deep that he did whatever he could to like keep her quote unquote alive no you go to the mausoleum and you bring those fucking flowers that you had yeah. in your home every exactly. day yes thank to you. the mausoleum yes thank you oh god so in 1944 um tansler finally moved to pasco county florida now this was close to zephyrillis florida which if you remember 
is where he and his wife Doris lived. Now, his wife is still alive at this point, and actually they reconnected around this time. And she, like, supported him and, like, helped him out and gave him a place to live. No. Through his later years, they actually, like, stayed. They were, I don't know that they ever, like, were legally married again, but they were close. Interesting. I know. So, um, okay. So, separated from his obsession, which was Elena, Tansler actually ended up making a replica of what he had constructed. So he essentially constructed like a mannequin, like a life-size doll of Elena and lived with it for his remaining years. So like fashioned it out of like like wax. You know what? Fine. You know what? It's crazy, but at least it's not her dead body anymore. I mean, exactly. Although. um, Oh, come on. (laughs) What? So on July 3rd of 1952, he was found dead on the floor of his home. And he was 75 years old. Mm -hmm. So there were rumors like floating around after he passed that Tanzer like left behind notes. I couldn't verify any of this. This is a lot of this is like hearsay. And this is like just rumors that are floating around. I don't know if anything, any of this is true at all. But that he stated that he had actually found Elena's grave and that the life-size doll he created of her was actually her. And like a bunch of, you know, really weird, crazy stuff. Exactly. I I highly doubt it also. Now, there were also rumors that he had sent letters claiming to have poisoned Elena, not out of malice, but out of like mercy and like wanting to relieve her suffering. Not again. I don't know if I believe that either. I don't think because he was trying so hard to keep her alive. Yeah, I would. I don't think he would have done that. So, and again, not none of that has been substantiated. Mm -hmm. But that is the crazy story. Of Carl Tanzler and poor Elena Oyos, who, I'm still in my in opinion, shock. is still not at rest, most likely. Guys, don't do this at home. Yeah, this is like a don't, don't do try this. this at home. Do a lot of things, but don't do this for the love of God. Visit your loved one. Yeah. Just bring them flowers. Yeah. Keep them alive in your memory. Don't take them home with you with flowers. After two years of decomposing in the Florida heat. In a radio flyer wagon. Oh my god. Can you imagine? I'm not going to look at my kid's wagon the same. I'm just saying. Kate's known for bringing us the good ones. Oh yeah. Well, thanks for listening to another episode, people. Yeah. We love you guys. You can follow us on Instagram at Medcrimes Podcast. Send us a Twitter at Medcrimes PC. Or you can search us on Facebook by searching Medcrimes Podcast. Or if you wish to become a Patreon of our fabulous family wooded woodland creatures, I just said wooded wooded creatures. You can visit us at www.patreon.com slash medcrimespodcast. Also, do you have a crazy story? This one. <laughs> Fuck. Do you know a guy who kept a body in his house? We want to know about it. I, I don't want to know about it. Well, we want to know your crazy stories. You can email us all of your crazy stories. Medcrimes at gmail.com. See we love ya. you guys. Keep us going. <laughs>